And this shows us, brothers and sisters, that one of the greatest calumnies, one of the greatest sins in Islam, is to speak about Allah without knowledge. To speak about Islam without knowledge. Allah challenges those who speak lies about Allah. Where did you get this from? Who told you this? مَا لَهُمْ بِهِ مِنْ عِلْمٍ Neither them nor their forefathers, they know this. And the Qur'an tells us, that one of the plots of shaitan, Allah says in the Quran, that shaitan commands you to associate partners with Allah, وَأَن تَقُولُوا عَلَى اللَّهِ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ And one of the tricks of shaitan, you speak about Allah without knowledge. And this is one of the biggest problems. You cannot deviate from the truth, except if you speak a falsehood. Think about it. You cannot deviate from the truth, Except if there's a lie about Allah, a lie about Islam, a lie about true Tawheed or true Risala. And where do these lies come from? Shaitan tells Allah, I will command them to do this and I will tell them lies. So anybody who speaks without knowledge of Allah and His Messenger and the Quran and Islam, this person is getting his information from Shaitan. This is what the Quran tells us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala negates any false information. You have no knowledge, neither you nor your forefathers. What a monstrosity comes from their mouths. كَبُرَتْ كَلِمَةً تَخْرُجُ مِنْ أَفْوَاهِهِمْ إِنْ يَقُولُونَ إِلَّا كَذِبًا They are saying nothing but lies. And no person on earth likes to hear slander about himself or herself. Do you like it if somebody says about you something that is false? We are, it is ingrained in us that we despise, uh, we despise falsehood, we despise lies. It is ingrained in us that when we are slandered, we want to defend ourselves. And this Feeling comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He put it in us. And our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa clarified this. He said, there is no being who is more patient than Allah. They slander him and they lie about him and they accuse him of having children and he still provides for them. If your enemy lied about you, could you be generous to that enemy? If your enemy accused you of a crime, of a falsehood, could you be generous to that enemy? No, Wallahi, you could not. Yet our Prophet ﷺ said, there is no being who is more patient and more forbearing than Allah. They lie about him. They even reject him, they deny him, they attribute children to him. But what does he do? He continues to give them their rizq. He continues to give them their sustenance. Also notice Allah says, what a lie comes from their mouths. Because to say that Allah has a child cannot come from the intellect. It cannot come from knowledge. It cannot come from a book. Where does it come from? They literally invent it from their mouths. It's just words. It's hot speech. It doesn't have a basis in the intellect, in the scripture, in the aql. All of this is coming straight from their hot air. And then to affirm how evil it is, they are saying, in illa They are saying that which is not true, it is a lie. And to lie about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is of the greatest crimes. And the Quran tells us in Surah, uh, in Surah Maryam, the Quran tells us that when the creation around us, when the heavens and the earth, when the mountains hear that certain beings attribute a child to Allah, those mountains, they want to crumble. How dare! Walada, that they have claimed that a Rahman has a child. Walada, and it is not befitting, it is not appropriate that a Rahman beget a child. So Allah says one of the main purposes of the Quran is what? is to correct misinformation about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then verse number 6 and 7, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَلَعَلَّكَ بَاخِعُ النَّفْسَكَ عَلَىٰ آثَارِهِمْ إِنْ لَمْ يُؤْمِنُوا بِهَذَا الْحَدِيثِ أَسَفَىٰ Surely it is very likely, فَلَعَلَّكَ Surely it is very likely, بَاخِعُ النَّفْسَكَ You will cause yourself, the word بَاخِ is very deep, there is no English equivalent. بَاخَعَ means to, literally it means to die from depression. To die from depression. And Allah Azza wa Jal is telling us that, Ya Rasulullah, if you continue down this path, you will cause your own destruction by your grief. Why is he sad? Where is the grief coming from? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clarifies, فَلَعَلَّكَ بَاخِعُ النَّفْسَكَ عَلَىٰ آثَارِهِمْ In following their footsteps, 
illam yu'minu bi hadha al-hadith asafa if they don't believe in this speech in this quran out of a grief for them so this verse is so profound because it shows us many things first and foremost the sheer eloquence it is as if the prophet sallam is following their footsteps ana atharihim they are turning around and walking away and our rasul sallam is going after them one after another and in that going around and in that following them he is feeling depressed why is he feeling depressed because they have rejected him no because they have rejected allah in lam yu'minu bi hadha al hadith and this shows us as well the sincerity of the prophet sallam wallahi most of us when we preach we are calling to our own egos and ourselves when we're in an argument we want to win we don't want the truth to win our prophet sallam he wanted the truth to win not himself and allah clarifies this in lam yu'minu bi hadha al hadith you are concerned because they don't believe in the quran not because they have rejected you but but because they have rejected Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then Allah says two more verses inna ja'alna ma 'ala al-ardi zinatan laha we have made everything on top of this earth a decoration for the earth zinatan laha so everything on top of the earth and that is men and women palaces beautiful trees rivers and oceans everything that we see it is a beautification not for Allah for this world Zinat Allah. Allah does not need this world. This world is not the permanent world. Allah is telling our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam all that is on this world and above it, it is a beautification for this world. Why? Li nabluhum. We are going to test all of them. Ayyuhum ahsanu amala. Who does the best deeds? Not the most deeds, rather the best deeds. Allah is not looking for quantity. Allah is looking for quality. All of this that is on this world, it is a test for them. Their money, their children, their women, the possessions that they own, all of this that is on this earth, we are going to test them and we will see who will do not the most the best and this shows us it is quality wallahi a person can give a million dollars and another can give 10 and it is possible that that million is worthless in the eyes of allah and that 10 is worth millions and millions it goes back to the intention a person can pray two rak'ah and that rak'ah can be more precious than this whole world and all that is in it and another can pray 200 and it will be thrown back at him because his intention was wrong all that they have now why what is the munasaba what is the reason why this verse comes after the previous one scholars say that perhaps it is natural for a person to feel why do the Quraysh why do those who reject Allah have so much wealth so much power why are they at the pinnacle of civilization why do they own why do they control why don't we have this so, and this was the case in early Makkah, the Quraysh had the power, the Quraysh had the Izzah, the Muslims were the ones persecuted. So what did Allah say? All that they have, this is a test for them. Don't put your heart on this, because the next verse clarifies, وَإِنَّا لَجَاعِلُونَ Look, verse number 6 says, إِنَّا جَعَلْنَا The next verse, وَإِنَّا لَجَاعِلُونَ We have done, we will do. We have done this, we will do something else. What have we done? We have made the world a zina, a beautification. What will we do? We will make this whole world Sa'id and Juruza. And Sa'id means flat land. And Juruza means infertile, without any greenery. So Allah is saying all of this beauty that you see, it is temporary. 